joining me, and welcome back to a brand new Studio Monday. With holidays just around the corner, I've got a fun card to share with you featuring lots of die cutting and products from Paper Smooches. Paper Smooches makes so many fun, whimsical designs, and I really love these die sets that we're going to be using in today's card. The first die set I have here is the Merry Christmas die. This die features Paper Smooch's signature script font, and I really love the fun, playful feel of it. Another die set that we'll be using is the Bird House dies. Now these Bird House dies create a birdhouse, and I really love that they have these really adorable little birds that match up with it, and you can layer up the different pieces to create some really fun houses. And then finally, we're going to be using this Wreath Builder die set, which is perfect for not only creating a wreath as the name suggests, but it's also really fun to create some really great pine bow accents on your cards, which is what we're going to be using them for today. Now I'm going to get started by applying the dies into my Big Shot machine onto some watercolor paper, and I'm going to go ahead and run them through. Now I'm cutting them from watercolor paper because we're going to be doing a watercoloring technique. So I've chosen some Canson XL watercolor paper. I've chosen this one in particular because it really works well with Zig Clean color markers. All right, so I'm popping out all the dies from the paper. You can see we've got some pine boughs. We've also got the bird houses and the birds. And now we're going to get started on the watercoloring. Now for the watercoloring, like I said, I'm using the Zig Clean color markers. And I'm taking the die cut pieces and I'm smooshing them into some watercolor that I've added down onto a piece of freezer paper. Freezer paper is great because it's a non-stick surface and it's really easy to clean up. To apply the watercoloring, I'm just taking some Zig Clean color markers and scribbling onto the paper to get some color down. I spritz it with water to get the color moving, and then I just go ahead and dab the pieces into the wet ink. And that creates these really fun and beautifully painted die cut pieces really easily. Now I will mention that this is very messy because your fingers are going to get very inky and the ink doesn't come off very easily as you'll see because my fingers get really, really inky. I don't mind because I really love getting inky. I think it's fun. But if you don't like that, you could either do this with gloves or you could watercolor paper prior to die cutting and then die cut the pieces from the watercolor paper that's already been colored. However, I like this method better because the sides of the die cuts actually get colored as well. So you're not going to see the white edges that you normally see if you were cutting from polar color paper that you've already colored. I'm creating the birdhouse using a couple of different reds. I mix them together and then smushing the birdhouse into the wet paint. I love pouncing these around as I smush them into the watercolor because it adds a little bit of texture. We're also going to be intensifying the texture of these pieces shortly when I go ahead and add some water splatters. So I'm going to continue coloring in the pieces with my ink that I'm applying down onto my freezer paper. And then I'm going to also take some of the smaller pieces and just color those in with a watercolor brush and just color directly onto the die cut pieces. This is because they're so small that it would be a lot harder to pounce them into the watercolor. So I'm just going to go ahead and color them in with my Zig Clean color markers and then blend it out with water brushes. So once I have all of my elements watercolored, it's time to take my Distress Sprayer. Now you can use any type of spray bottle to go ahead and add water droplets, or you can even take a paintbrush and flip water onto your die cut pieces. Either way works. But I'm going to take the dry rag and I'm going to dab up the water splatters just to get the color lifted off of these pieces and give a little bit of variation to the watercolor. So after I've finished all of my watercolor, it's time to go ahead and start building these houses. These houses are a lot of fun to build, and they're also very, very easy. And I'm going to show you just how easy it is to put these together. So now I'm lining them up onto my work surface here so you can actually see all the pieces that we've created. Here's the little birds. I think they're so adorable. And then you've also got the houses, the pine boughs, and I've colored them in two different types of greens. One green is like a teal aqua green, and then the other one is a true green. Now again, don't mind my messy fingers. Now that I've done all of this inking, my fingers are now stained. So even now, as I'm doing this voiceover, my fingers still have ink all over them. And I'm actually voicing this over a whole day later. Here's a close-up look of how the watercoloring that we did by ink smushing added color onto the edges of these die-cut pieces. So there's no longer the white core of the cardstock showing through. To build the birdhouses, I'm just taking some liquid glue and I'm adhering the little rooftops on top of each of the two birdhouses. You can see I colored this one with browns and then the other one I colored with reds. 
The glue I'm using is PPA Matte Adhesive. I find this adhesive is my favorite to use out of all the different adhesives that I have in my craft room. This one is the one I reach for most often. Now it's time to create a background. So I've taken some Zig Clean color marker and I've just scribbled on some of the color onto this watercolor paper. This is the same Canson XL paper and I'm just spritzing the paper with water to get the color that I've applied down onto the paper moving. This is going to create a very light wash and I'm going to continue to add color to this wash to build up some depth of color and also some variation. I'm taking this green color, I think this one's pale green or shadow green. I'll have them all linked in the video description and also on the sign and blog so that way you can get the exact colors that I've used. But I'm now just taking some water and I'm moving that color around. I vary it up between using a brush and also using the spray bottle. And I think it really adds a lot of fun texture when you mix things up like this to create some variegated looks. The best way to get these kinds of results is to just play and have fun because you really get some really amazing stuff when you try things out. Things that you normally wouldn't think to do, go ahead and go crazy. It's what makes art so much fun is because you get to try anything you want and not have to worry about it looking a certain way because making a card is art. You can do whatever you want. Okay, so now it's time to take some silver distress spray. This is gorgeous. This is a beautiful metallic color. Now because this is metallic, it's got a mixer ball in it, so you want to shake this up really, really well before using it. And I'm just taking the nozzle off of the bottle and I'm flicking droplets of this silver spray onto my paper to create some fun droplets of ink. I think this adds a lot of texture to the card. And then after I've applied the splatters, I'm going to go ahead and dry that with my heat gun. Next I'm going to take my die cutting machine once again. And this time I'm going to take the six rectangle dies from Simon Says Stamp, this is the largest, and I'm going to cut it from a piece of white cardstock. I'm also going to cut the panel that we did our water coloring and distress spray flicking onto. I'm going to cut that with the same stitched rectangle die. Now I'm going to remove that paper and bring in that white piece that we had die cut previously. And I'm going to take this new die from Memory Box to add a nice border along here. Now this die, like I said, is brand new from Memory Box. This is the circle bump borders. There are actually two different types of these borders from Memory Box. One is circles and the other is squares. And these do coordinate with some of their other dies. However, these create these really fun partial die cut panels on a border, which is really, really great because now you don't have to do partial die cutting to create this fun look. You've got a die that will do it for you, which is absolutely awesome. So I'm going to go ahead and run this through my Big Shot machine to go ahead and cut this white border. We're not going to need the top piece, so you can get rid of that. We're just going to need this bottom portion, which we're going to be attaching onto our watercolor panel. So I'm taking some fun foam, and I'm putting it on the back side of our die cut piece. And I'm going to then be able to attach this right on top of our watercolor paper to create this nice raised up border panel. I'm also going to be starting to attach my little pine boughs. I'm using the same liquid glue that I used to build my bird houses. And I'm just applying it to the back side of each of these little die cut pieces and attaching them down behind my border panel. I really love these dies from Paper Smooches. These are great for not only creating Christmas cards, but you could create winter cards using these dies as well. Just change up the sentiment. I used a Merry Christmas die here for the sentiment for this card. But again, you could use any type of sentiment. You could create a thank you card with a winter theme or a birthday card. Any types of cards you could create with this card design and these products, just change up the sentiment if you want to have something other than Christmas. Now speaking of Christmas, I die cut that die from some glitter paper and also some white cardstock. So I'm taking the two pieces that I cut from white cardstock and I'm gluing them together to create a more dimensional die cut element. This is going to help me give a little bit of lift off of the paper. Once I've attached those two together, I'm going to add more spray adhesive to the die cuts and I'll go ahead and attach my glitter paper die cut on top of the white cardstock pieces. The spray adhesive I'm using is something I picked up from my local Michaels years ago and I don't know if it's still around at this point. So any type of spray adhesive would work for this. I look for ones that don't have an odor because I don't want the toxic fumes that some of the other spray adhesives have. So just look, go ahead and look for something that says no odor or something similar and that will work just as well. So I'm going to adhere this down onto my card using some of that same PPA matte adhesive. And now I'm going to add some twine to the back side of my birdhouses to make them look like they're hanging off the top of my card. 
So I'm taking the hemp and I'm putting it on the back side of the houses and then I'm going to take a piece of scotch tape and attach it down to the back side. I'm now taking a second strand of that twine and we'll go ahead and tie a little bow at the top portion of this birdhouse. Now the reason I'm tying it around the second strand of string is because that way I won't have to actually glue this down onto my card. It's already tied to something so that way it's not going to end up coming off of my card. Which makes it much safer for mailing me because I won't have to worry about it coming off when I put it in an envelope. So I'm attaching some fun foam to the back side of the houses and then I'll go ahead and tuck them down in between my pine boughs. I attached them to the back side of my card using some more scotch tape that's just going to hold them down and because it's on the back side of the card you can adhere them down with any type of tape or adhesive that you prefer because nobody's going to see it. Okay so now it's time to add some embellishing. I'm taking some glitter nouveau drops that I had already pre-created. If you want to learn more about creating nouveau crystal drops like these, these are created with the glitter drops. Be sure to check out the video that I'm linking up at the top of the screen because I just created a whole series of videos for the Simon Says Stamp blog that features some of these fabulous Nouveau embellishment products from Tonic Studios. The glitter drops are part of that video series, so be sure to check that out because you'll be able to find a lot more information on how to create those. Because I had already created them beforehand, I don't have any footage to share with you on how I actually created these. Okay, so now it's time to finish up my card. I put some fun foam on the back side of my panel and I'm putting some double sided tape on the back side of the fun foam to go ahead and attach this down onto my A2 size card. This is a top folding Nina Desert Storm cardstock base and I love how that nice brown color matches the earthy tones that we have going on here. I'm adding some sparkle and shine using a Spectrum Noir sparkle pen. I'm very quickly and carefully applying this onto my elements because I don't want to smudge the watercoloring that we've already done. The Spectrum Noir Sparkle Pen, because it's a liquid, will reactivate the watercoloring that we've already done. I'm also adding a look of snow to the bottom portion of my panel using some sparkle glitter drops from Nuvo. This is the same type of product that I used to create the little berry embellishments that we have around our pine boughs. So again, be sure to check out that video for a lot more information on Nuvo products. This glitter color is the White Blizzard. I love the sparkle and shine of this glitter. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm also adding it to the top portion of the birdhouse roofs that's just going to add a nice look of snow and really dress these cards up and make them look really festive for Christmas. You'll also notice I added the birds on top of the words Merry Christmas and that finished up my card. So I hope you've enjoyed and got some inspiration on using these fun paper smooches products and I also hope you've gotten some ideas for creating some fun winter cards and also using your Zig Clean color markers to do some ink smushing on your die cuts. Be sure to give this video a big thumbs up, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and you can connect with us on social media at Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, YouTube, Twitter, as well as our blog. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you again soon.